The Gospel of March the 3rd, 2017, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's very convenient for us to have a peek of the first reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, cry out full-throated and unsparingly. Tell my people their wickedness. They desire to know my ways. They ask, why do we fast if you do not see it? Lo, on your fast day you carry out your own pursuits. You drive all your laborers. Your fast ends quarreling and fighting, striking with wicked claw. I'm going to start preaching first for all my brothers in the Roman Catholic Church. And for that same purpose, everyone in the Reformed Church. We do not fast. We don't like to fast. We, most of us, reason that we don't need to fast, and even the requirements of our own church, the seed, the Holy Seed of uh, the Holy See of Rome, requires only to fast on Ash Wednesday, Wednesday, and on Holy Friday, only two days in the entire year. And some of us reason that the Lord remains with us, that we don't need to fast, that the words of the Lord were only meant for the three days that he was in the tomb. Is it the same, let me ask you, to have the Lord present in his human self among us, teaching us, speaking to us in the morning, in the midday, throughout the whole day, teaching us and showing us how to, how to learn to be like him? Is it the same as to have him in the holy bread, in the consecrated bread and wine, in the sanguis, in the blood of the Lord? Does the blood of the Lord and his body speak to you daily, throughout the day? Of course he does not. Does the presence of the Lord, does the word of the Lord in Holy Scripture speak to you daily, teach you something daily? just a little bit. It's not the same. He has, to, he has been taken away from us. You cannot cover up saying that the Lord still remains with you in the same way that he was with his disciples. Those three years of his ministry with them were his seminary for them. He was teaching them. He was allowing them to understand him, to get to know him to be like him, like him, so that they could perform the deeds that he was doing. We, we need to fast. And again, how is it possible that even we who have been ordained look for our own pursuits? First, in the first place, we do not fast. And then we look for our own pursuits. We look for profit. We are haughty, we are prideful, we want to impose our ways. How come? We were ordained to serve our brothers. But not only us ordained ministers. Also all of you consecrated people of God. We need to fast. Let me compare real quick the spirituality of our Orthodox brothers, they do fast. As a matter of fact, they have a very strong tradition of fasting, which comes down from the beginning of our own church, because we were, we used to be one church, and still are. We still are one church, and, and even though we might be divided seemingly, the body of the Lord, which we share, we share unites us. The word of the Lord, which we share, unites us. 
the blood spilled of the Lord mixed with the martyr's blood unites us. The suffering and pain throughout the world unites us. But the fact is that many of the members are weak. We are weak and are easy prey of the devil because we don't fast. Fasting helps us quite a bit in order to become stronger to defend ourselves from the devil, or rather to allow the Holy Spirit to defend ourselves. It makes us stronger in pursuing the ways of God, because when we don't fast, then we might tend to indulge, and when we start indulging, it is like a handle for the devil to twist your life, even in the spiritual level. Because then you are wanting to see what you're going to eat afterwards. If you complain whether the food that you ate was not good up, up to your standards, and so on and so on. It is a really a disgrace to see especially priests who are fat. Why? It is very much as is written in scripture. They have made their bellies the most important part of their life. No, brothers, we need to fast. And again, I beg you to start fasting. And while you fast, pray for everyone. It is not as if we should. The Lord says, then they will, they will fast. They will. Let us retake that tradition. And do pray for all of us ordained ministers. That we might also fast and be stronger to fight against the devils. To pray and fast that we might receive all the graces, the Holy Spirit that God wants to share on us, that God wants to put on us so that we might be strong and become truly the sons of God through our actions. Fast, pray, and share a bit of your food, a bit of your drink, a bit of your clothes, a bit of your time tending a sick, a bit of your time visiting someone in prison. That is the way that we should live, loving each other, until we meet in heaven. God bless you all, brothers.